Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. Um, hope you're doing well today. Um, I don't know about you, but there's one sports uh, or sports entertainment program that I usually tune into. It's WWE, World Wrestling Entertainment. And the reason why I say that is because um, that show, that program, uh, has been has had a following for so many years now that it's been called one of their programs uh, on Monday nights has been called the longest running uh, TV show or program uh, in history, spanning uh, over 20 years, and um, it's been going on for a while and. Every night, every Monday night at least, you'll see people uh, dressed in ex extravagant wardrobe and uh, portraying different characters. And it's been called uh, the man's soap opera because it has the, 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 the trimmings of a good storyline, good entertainment, and athleticism that is really allowing people or the audience to tune into it and you probably know of some characters um, and uh, you probably cheered for some characters who would portray the good character and also uh, booed or jeered other characters that would represent uh, the evil nemesis but there is also a world wrestling entertainment uh, the very first one actually and we can find it in the Bible in the book of Genesis chapter 32 but this kind of wrestling is different from what we usually see on television this wrestling is actually um, wrestling a human wrestling the Almighty God and we can see in our story today the story and the life of Jacob the son of Isaac the grandson of Abraham and the name Jacob itself comes from the biblical story of Jacob's birth where he came out holding the heel of his twin brother Esau so right from the very beginning, as soon as he got, he was born into this world, Jacob already was into grabbing people's uh, heels. And in this case, uh, the name Jacob comes either from the Hebrew root, meaning to follow or to be behind, but also to supplant, circumvent, assail, and or overreach or comes from the word heel and just like in any wrestling uh, storyline on television there would be the hero and there will be the heel but let's take a look at the life of Jacob today if you have your Bibles with you again it was read to us in Genesis chapter 32 and I and you might also be one who enjoys sports and athletics but never been a wrestler and you might not be able to appreciate the wrestling aspect of sports but if you are a mixed martial arts enthusiast you'd probably um, appreciate this kind of martial art but then today we will be looking at, metaphorically, the life story of Jacob, the wrestler. And who did he wrestle? He wrestled none other than God's angel. And in our story today, we will just be looking at how we can learn and learn some principles from Jacob and his life. But first, let's all pray. Dear God, Heavenly Father, praise you and thank you, Lord, for
for your goodness, for your faithfulness in our lives. Lord, many times, Lord, we do realize that um, although sometimes we have good intentions, Lord, and just like Jacob, we have we have in our hearts and our only wish is that we will please you and that we will be able to say our prayers Lord to you with much power and confidence but Lord during these dark times we can only truly say that unless we have wrestled with you, O God, in prayer. Then you won't truly realize and you won't truly understand and appreciate how it is to struggle, how it is to prevail in prayer. Lord, thank you for today. Holy Spirit, please be with us. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. See, in our passage today, in chapter 32 of Genesis, verse 20, it says, Then the man said, Your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, because you have struggled with God and with humans and have overcome. See, Jacob, <clears throat> Jacob was the son of Isaac. And um, he's also, his mother is, uh, is uh, Rebecca. And his brother is Esau. And he's the one who actually grabbed the heel of Esau. And his grandfather, of course, is none other than Abraham, the patriarch of Israel, of the child, God's chosen people. But then Jacob also had two wives. He had Leah, Leah and Rachel. He also had two concubines. He had 12 sons, one daughter, and several sheep and goats. See, in Genesis chapter 28, verse 12 to 15, we see here an episode in Jacob's life where he had a dream in which he saw a stairway resting on the earth with its top reaching to heaven and the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. There above it stood the Lord, and he said, I am the Lord, the God of your father, Abraham, and the God of Isaac. I will give you and your descendants the land on which you are lying. Your descendants will be like the dust of the earth, and you will spread out to the west and to the east, and to the north and to the south. All peoples on earth will be blessed through you. And your offspring I am with you and I will watch over you wherever you go and I will bring you back to this land I will not leave you until I've done what I have promised you so Jacob then made a vow saying if God will be with me and I will and will watch over me on this journey I am taking and will give me food to eat and clothes to wear so that I return safely to my father's household. Then the Lord will be my God, and this stone that I've set up as a pillar will be God's house. And of all that you give me, I will give you a tenth. See, Jacob said, O God of my father Abraham, and God of my father Isaac, the Lord you said unto me, Return unto thy country and to thy kindred, and I will deal well with thee. Deliver me, I pray thee, from the hand of my brother and from the hand of Esau, for I fear him, lest he will come and smite me and the mother with the children. So Jacob returns to the promised land as God tells him. But unfinished business with Esau, he ran his, where he ran his life from. Um, he sends word that he's coming back. Uh, being blessed by God via a messenger, he had 400 trained men as welcoming party with him. So this might be the setup 
for a possible collision or clash between this, these two brothers. So, might be exciting, but not by this, with an entourage of flocks and the whole family. See, he's been in a difficult place before, Jacob has. In verses 7 to 12, we can see there. As Jacob went on his way, the angels of God met him. And when he saw them, he said, this is God's host. He saw the angels of God in a dream and camping around about him. And Jacob sent a humble conciliatory message to his brother Esau. And the messengers returned to Jacob saying, We came to my to thy brother Esau, and also, and he also he cometh to meet thee. And four hundred men with him. Then Jacob was greatly afraid and distressed. And he divided the people that was with him and the flocks and the herds and the camels into two bands. And said, If Esau came to the one company and smite it, then the other company which is left shall escape. He goes back to problem solving. In problem solving mode. In verse 13. We can see there that he get, he um, he had a plan to give Esau a series of gifts. To win him over. To prepare for the worst. But still he cannot sleep. He had no peace. He was not at peace. In verse 22 it says. So is Jacob in a place where he is acting in faith or in fear? Or is it the old shady Jacob that we know? See, some of us today, we most likely in this kind of uh, situation in a pandemic, might be acting in faith. Or we might be acting in fear, just like Jacob. Are we going to go back to the times where we feared so many things when we feel like we cannot move forward because we are afraid are we going to go back to our old selves and after a year of this pandemic still crumble at the thought that god will not be with us because sometimes we're acting like we have no god we're acting like we are so fearful and we don't give ourselves the opportunity to exercise our faith. See, the text here doesn't tell this about Jacob, but we know that he prayed. And that's something that he did. He prayed. And yet he is afraid and he was alone. And yet he has come to the end of his options. And he realizes he has done absolutely everything he could. But it is not enough. And I think God is moving Jacob to the next exact spot where he wants him. And God wants to bring Jacob to the end of himself. It's easy to remember God's promise of blessings to Jacob's family. In other words, in order to bring Jacob to a place of blessing, he has to bring him first to the end of himself. And my takeaway in this is that in order for God to take me to a place of blessing, he has to take me first to the end of myself. To take us to a place where we have done all and absolutely all that we know and realize that it is not enough. See, that's the first principle we can learn here. To get to a place of blessing, God has to take us first to the end of ourselves. See, uh, I'll tell you a story where many years ago when we decided to immigrate to Canada, we thought, okay, if we were going to live there in Canada, we were going to study there, we're going to have a start a family there, my wife and I, we have to decide to sell our house in the Philippines. And then we couldn't sell the house. So 
Okay, Lord, I said, I know you want me to finish my studies. Back then, I was studying in the Bible school. But then, I can't sell this piece of property. And I was praying. I was earnestly praying to God. Lord, what do you want me to do? I'm at the end of myself. I'm caught. I'm caught in between the decision to not pursue selling the property anymore and or not finishing my studies here in Canada. And so God answered that prayer because he wanted me to get to a point where I was desperate enough to be on my knees and ask him for wisdom. So he gave me wisdom. And so that very day when I was there on my knees, the neighbor came out and he said, you know, we exchanged pleasantries. The neighbor back home in the Philippines, you know, he said that I was my family and I, you know, we're in this neighborhood for a time now. And we were looking for a property to buy for ourselves. And it so happened that even before the, uh, the signs were up, that they offered us a very good um, uh, offer for the house. And so that's where God wants us to be in our prayer lives. Sometimes we have to be at the end of ourselves. Sometimes we have to be in desperate mode so that we will truly be earnestly, sincerely asking for His will, asking for wisdom, asking for forgiveness, and asking Him to intervene. Are you in a similar situation where you know God wants to bless you and you've done everything but Then, just like Jacob, Jacob here in the Bible is not, who's been in desperate mode and alone couldn't sleep, he had no peace. And so now Jacob wants, God jumps, wants Jacob where he wants him. Now he is ready for a fight. He is ready for a wrestling match. In verse 24, says, Then Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until they break. See, Jacob was a fighter. He has fought all his life. And he knows when people start swinging, when people start trying to, when, start, when they start swinging at him, he starts swinging back. He starts fighting back. So suddenly you have this picture of a comical wrestling match that went on and on and on all night. And somehow, nobody seems to win. And the guy wrestling Jacob in verse 25 says there, when he saw that he had not prevailed against him, could not overpower him. That's the word. It's a fascinating statement as we learn later. On this text that this is no ordinary man maybe this guy really decided to not overpower him because he easily could have then he does a wrestling move that that's like a game ender or a finishing move as they say in wrestling he touched the socket of his thigh so that the socket of Jacob's thigh was dislocated while he wrestled with him. He was injured at this point. So Jacob was in a position where he is just hanging on, just clinging. And as he clings, he realizes he is wrestling with no ordinary man and he begins to cry out for a blessing. In verse 26, you're following here, it said, and he said, let me go for the dawn is breaking. But he said, I will not let you go unless you, break, you bless me. So this, um, this man who was wrestling Jacob, he was 
pleading. He was telling this to let me go. He was telling Jacob, let me go. For the dawn is breaking. It's about the morning is about to come. And yet Jacob said, no, I will not let you go. Jacob is fighting. Jacob is not giving up. And he said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. You see, he is in a lot of pain here. As the socket of his thigh was dislocated. Have you ever had a dislocated uh, shoulder or uh, an ankle where you can feel the pain or even sometimes the numbness uh, and it's your, your bone is just hanging by the ligament? I have not experienced such a thing, but I did experience a fracture in the bone. And that was painful as well. But then he said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. Again, God has Jacob exactly where he wants him. Clinging and crying for the blessing of God. No longer able to run. No longer able to escape. But realizing that he can't let go of God. See, there's a lot of Jacob in us whether in life or in ministry, where we have done everything and absolutely everything we know and we can't accomplish a thing. So, not only that for us to get, a, to, get to a place of blessing, God has to take us first to the end of ourselves. Number two, lesson here, is to bring you to a blessing, to a place of blessing, God will wrestle you to a point of dependence. So first, He will take us to the end of ourselves for Him to bless us. But then He also will bring us to a place of blessing when God wrestles us to the point of dependence. Where your only hope brothers and sisters, is when you hang on to Him and say, I will not let you go unless you bless me. See, this is no ordinary man. It could be an angel of the Lord that he was wrestling and somehow Jacob realizes that he is fighting with God. So fighting with men all the time, Jacob has. And his father, you know, he fought his father for the blessing his brother, you know, Esau, even when he was first uh, given, has been given birth to him, he already grabbed, uh, I don't know if it was metaphorically or figuratively or literally, but he already was grabbing his brother's heel. And he also fought with his brother-in-law, Laban, for, for, the, for the heart of his daughter. And yet he didn't realize that he was fighting here with God all his life. That God had a bigger plan for him. See, I had a classmate in Bible school. And he said this. He said, when he was experiencing crisis in his life, he said, all the while I thought I was fighting with Satan. But really, it was God I was up against. And so sometimes we feel something like that, right? We feel that the crisis that we're experiencing, the difficulty, the trial that we are experiencing in life, even a pandemic like this, you know, we have to fight for our lives. You know, if you've had the, the virus or if you are, your loved one has and you know that he or she is fighting for his or her life, or he had cancer, he has cancer. You know how it is to be in desperate mode, in desperation. And the whole time you're thinking, you are fighting with the evil enemy, Satan. But sometimes, here, exactly in this, in this story, it was really God. And how is that possible? That we are up against God. We are up against God in terms of our prayer, in terms of us trying
trying to receive God's blessing for our lives. God's blessing meaning not just the material blessing that He provides for, for His children, but more so the blessing of His will being fulfilled in our lives. See, the question is this. I don't know how who you're up against today. Maybe financial hurdles, you lost your job, maybe it's um, a relative or a loved one or a friend you know who's fighting for his life or her life due to an illness. Maybe these are family issues, maybe relational, maybe someone that you have not truly forgiven, maybe someone who's truly a pain in your life and you're trying to get rid of him or her. Maybe it's about a wayward son or daughter and you want him or her to come back to God, to come back to a loving relationship with him. Maybe it's health or faith issues. Maybe it's about your own faith. Maybe you've lost faith. You have lost hope. See in Genesis 32 verse 28. Says there, then the man said, Your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel. And why is this? This is symbolizing the fact that because Jacob has wrestled with God, he's wrestled with God in prayers, wrestled with God in his own personal relationship, then God has given him the blessing. And this blessing in is in a name change. What does a name change signify? When God changes a name in Bible, in the Bible, that just means that he has been given a new identity. And this new identity of being first a deceiver or a heel, you know, Jacob has always been known to be a heel. He's always been known to be the bad guy, to be the usurper. To be the, the, the liar, the deceitful guy. The, boy, the guy who you cannot trust. The traitor. Now, because of what he has done, because of how he struggled with God. He's been given the name Israel because he has struggled with God and with humans and have overcome. Friends, have you overcome your trial? By prayer. See, when Jacob asked him and said, Please tell me your name, why is that? But he said, The angel said, Why is it that you ask my name? And then he blessed him there. Friends, this is a very simple message to let us know that there's hope, there's, there's peace. He offers us peace. He offers us a blessing. Whenever we come to a point of our lives, a point where we are at the end of our rope, at the end of our life, and we desperately seek Him. And we are at a point of our lives where it's just dependent on Him for everything. So my prayer for you today is that you will continue to encourage yourself and your loved ones. That unless we prevail in prayer, unless we struggle, unless we ourselves get to a point where our only hope and dependence is on God. And we will not truly realize His blessing. We will not truly experience the blessing of Him giving us a new identity, giving us a new life, a new hope. And so I would like for us to just pray right now. A very simple prayer. 
And if you think you believe that you haven't found this peace, you haven't found this blessing from God, in the midst of these dark times, in the midst of the crisis that you're in right now, you can tell God, Lord, I will not let go of you unless you bless me. I need your blessing today. I need your wisdom today. I need your peace, your wisdom. I need your answer to our prayer. I need, Lord, your holy presence in my life. I need your forgiveness. Shall we pray? Dear God, Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, that you have made us to realize that without a deep grasp of the gospel of Jesus Christ, we believe that salvation, happiness, blessing just really depends conditionally on something that we are or do. Therefore, Lord, if we continue to build our identity on something else besides Jesus, then we will just end up being frustrated, disappointed. Lord, I pray, O oh God, that for all those who are listening, that they will have a sense of self-acceptance. They will have, if they're seeking comfort or lack of stress or freedom in their lives, if they're asking for approval, Lord, in their lives, for control and self-discipline, if they are seeking for power, Lord, over their sins. Lord, I pray, O oh God, that you will just give them Jesus today. Lord, I pray, O oh God, that you will allow them, Lord, to struggle, continue in the struggle by keeping diligent in prayer, not giving up. That, Lord, you will not make them go to other people, Lord, and be dependent on others, but wholly be dependent on you and you alone. That they can get all their only comfort, approval, control, and power, not on anyone else or anything else, but on you alone. And to you, to those who are um, needing assurance of salvation today, I would ask you to just pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord, you say, dear Lord, just say it. Please forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I want to turn my back on my past. Forgive me. Jesus, I invite you into my life. Please come. Please come and live in me forever. Take control of my life. Be the Lord of my life. Give me eternal life as you have promised. Lord, make me the kind of person you want me to be. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross. For my sins. I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart that you died and risen from the dead and you will come back again 